In the field of cybersecurity, you'll need an environment to test your new tools and learn new techniques. Today, I'll be showing you how you can build your own home lab to allow you to test those new tools and of course, have the opportunity to break things. When we wanna test out our new tools and maybe even execute malware to identify additional indicators of compromise or how exactly does it work? We typically want to avoid running that malware on our production machines such as our machine or even company's production machine. Definitely do not do it on a domain controller. So instead we opt for a virtual environment, preferably a sandboxed environment. Now there are multiple vendors that allow us to create a virtual environment. And some of those vendors include VMware, for example, VirtualBox, Windows Hyper-V, and also Windows Sandboxed Environment, which I believe is built into Windows. However, for this video, I'll be going over how we can create a basic home lab using VirtualBox. All right, so first we'll begin with installing VirtualBox by heading over to their site, virtualbox.org. Now, depending on the operating system you have, that is the one that we're going to be downloading. So we can go ahead and click download VirtualBox 7.0. From here, we know that this machine that I'm using is a Windows host machine. So I'll go ahead and click download on that. While that's downloading, we can actually go ahead and check out the SHA-256 checksums as well. When you go into the checksum, it will provide you with a list of SHA-256 hashes. And then this way, we can verify the downloaded file to determine whether or not it has been altered. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll head over to the downloads directory in which our file lives in. We'll open PowerShell. And then I'll do a get file hash, virtual box, hit tab, click on enter. And by default, SHA-256 is generated. What we can do is double click that. And then we can paste it in and see if it matches up. So we know for a fact that the file in transit was not changed whatsoever. Now we can go ahead and double click VirtualBox to start installing it. Now we might get hit with a compatibility issue or missing some software dependencies, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. Click on yes. And from here, we notice that there is a Microsoft Visual C++ 2019 package dependency. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and install this dependency and I'll put the link down in the description below just in case that you get hit with this dependency as well. I went and downloaded the dependency and installed it. So now we can go ahead and double click the VirtualBox installer again, hit yes. And now it doesn't give me that dependency error anymore. We are presented with some of the features which we can install and they are all set to be installed by default but you do have that option to customize it, which is quite nice. Here you can change where you want VirtualBox to be installed in. For example, if you don't have enough space in the C drive, you can always install it in a different drive if you like. But in this case, we'll go with the default and hit next. This will provide you with a warning that it will reset your network connection and temporarily disconnect you. Hit yes and install the needed dependencies. Once it's done installing, you should see the sign. All you gotta do is click on finish and then virtual box should automatically pop up. And just like that. Now that we have virtual box installed, the next step is to create your virtual machine using the desired operating system you want. For example, Windows 10, Linux, you name it. In this demo, we'll be installing Windows 10 and in the background, I'll also have Splunk and Sysmon as well. I've created a video on both of those in the past. So if you're curious on learning how to install those tools, you can go ahead and click on that. And for the second machine, I'm going to be installing Kali Linux to act as our attacker machine. So if you never installed Kali Linux before, this will be a great learning opportunity for you. There are many ways to download a Windows 10 operating system image, but the safest way, in my opinion, is to create your own image. And here is how you can do that. But do keep in mind that you will require a valid license to install Windows 10. We'll navigate to the link, which I'll list down in the description for you. And once we're on this page, we can go ahead and scroll down and click on download tool now. 
This will download what is called a media creation tool, which will help you generate a Windows ISO image file. So we can go ahead and double click that to open the file, click on yes. And now it will get a few things ready. You'll eventually be presented with this license agreements page and we can go ahead and hit accept. It will say getting a few things ready again. Once it is done checking things, you should be presented with this screen now displaying two options. One, to upgrade your PC or two, create an installation media. What we want to select is create the installation media and hit next. You have the option to customize your settings such as language, edition, and architecture, but I'll leave mine checked to use the recommended option for this PC and hit next. Now we are presented with two media choices to use, a USB flash drive or an ISO file. We'll select the ISO file and hit next and save the ISO file anywhere you like and it will start downloading. So now that my Windows ISO image has been successfully downloaded, we can now jump over to our virtual box and start creating a virtual machine. We'll open up the window for virtual box and click on new. Here we can enter a name for our virtual machine and select the directory where we want to store our files. So I will go ahead and name our virtual machine demo. I'll leave the folder as is. As for the ISO image, I will click on this and select the drop down, click on other. And now I'll find the ISO image that I just downloaded. It was listed under documents and double click the Windows ISO. At the bottom, there's an option where you can check skip unintended installation, which I will do actually. That way I can install the operating system manually. Now you can uncheck this or check this, it's up to you. I'll click on next. Here we have the options to configure our virtual machine specifications. However, do be aware that this will be relying on your computer's specifications. For this demo, I'll set my base memory for this virtual machine as four gigs and we'll have it as one CPU. I'll click on next. For the virtual hard disk, I'll leave it as 50 gigs and hit next. Now this will give you a nice summary as to what your settings are for this virtual machine. If you're good to go, click on finish. And now we can go ahead and start powering it on. To power it on, you just hit this arrow that says start. Now once it's running, we should be able to start seeing this Windows 10 setup. So we'll go ahead and select next and hit install now. Once you're presented with this activate Windows screen, go ahead and select I don't have a product key. And as for the option, select Windows 10 Pro. Hit next, accept the license terms. And here you have the option to upgrade or custom install Windows only. I'm gonna select custom install Windows only. Hit next. And then now Windows 10 should be installing in the background. So now that we have Windows 10 installed, we'll jump into how do we install Kali Linux. To install Kali, we want to head over to their site, Kali.org. Once we're on their site, we want to click on download and we'll be presented with a bunch of different options. The nice thing about Kali is that they have a pre-built virtual machine, which we can download and import into our own virtual box which is what we'll do. Now you do have the option to go ahead and manually download Kali Linux via an ISO file, similar to how we did it with Windows 10. Let's go and download the pre-built virtual machine. I'll be downloading the 64-bit version of Kali, but if you have a 32-bit machine, you'll have to select the 32-bit. And to do that, you click on the 32-bit option here. But I'll be going to the 64-bit and downloading the VirtualBox 64. To check whether or not you have a 32 or 64-bit machine, you can click on the Windows key and type in System. Click on the System Information. And from here, you can take a look at your system type. In my case, it's an x64, meaning it's a 64-bit. Another way to look at it is if you click on the File Explorer, so open up your directories, click on the C drive. If you happen to notice two individual 
directories, so your program files and a programs files x86. That's another telltale sign that your computer is a 64-bit computer. Now, if you only have one of these directories, it is likely your computer is a 32-bit machine. Looking at the download for Kali Linux, I noticed that it is a 7-zip file extension, meaning that if you don't have 7-zip installed on your machine yet, I would highly recommend it. To install 7-zip, we'll go ahead and navigate to their website, 7-zip.org. Take a look at your architecture. If it's a Windows 64-bit machine or a 32-bit machine, download the appropriate one for you. In my case, it's a 64-bit machine, so I'll go ahead and download that. Once that is downloaded, I'll go ahead and install it, and it's installed. Perfect. Kali has finished downloading, and there is one thing I forgot to mention, and that is the default credentials to log into Kali Linux. The default credentials is the username Kali and the password Kali as well. Let's head over to our downloads folder. And now since we have 7-zip installed, we can go ahead and right click the Kali Linux archive, go to 7-zip and click on extract to directory. Now that it is done extracting, let's head into that folder. And all you need to do is double click on the .vbox file. If you don't see the file extension, you can simply click on view and check file name extension. Once we do that, we can now see the .vbox file extension. And once we double click that, it should automatically be imported into our virtual box. So we can go ahead and start Kali. And when you're on the logon screen, just remember to log in with Kali and Kali as the password. And now we have two virtual machines that we can play around with. Now that we have both of our virtual machines up and running, there is a couple things that you should be aware of. Number one, sandboxed environment. Simply creating virtual machines does not typically mean that they are in a sandboxed environment. In other words, if you don't configure the virtual machines properly, you can easily infect your own machine and also infect other machines that are connected to your network. So I highly suggest you do not download malware from the internet and execute it into your virtual machines until you properly configure them. Because if you can imagine, you download ransomware and you're thinking, hey, how does this ransomware work? Let's double click it and identify some indicators of compromise. Well, if you didn't properly configure your virtual machines, guess what? Your host is toast. <laughs> you can, however, use Kali Linux to craft your own exploit and malware and target your Windows 10 machine and double click your malware and execute it like that. That way you at least know that you're controlling that malware and you know what it should be doing. Number two, snapshots. Create snapshots prior to breaking things. So <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, before you test anything on your virtual machine, go and create a snapshot. And what a snapshot is, is essentially creating a moment in time backup. So that way, if you double click a malware and you configured your virtual machine properly, the malware goes around your virtual machine, breaks things, you can revert it back to your previous snapshot and everything is good to go again. To create a snapshot in VirtualBox, select this menu and click on snapshots. At the top, you'll see an option that says take. Click on take. Now you want to provide a descriptive name for your snapshot. In this example, I'll call it as a baseline and then your snapshot description. Again, I'll say baseline and hit OK. Now VirtualBox will begin taking a snapshot of your virtual machine. Now, for example, if you were to run ransomware or end up breaking your virtual machine and you want to restore it, select the snapshot that you have taken previously. In this case, it was baseline, so I will select that. And all we need to do is select restore. Click on that and that's it. And number three, specifications. Be very careful about over specking your virtual machines, especially if your own PC does not have enough resources. For example, if I have a four gig RAM laptop with like two cores, for example, I'm not gonna be able to run 10 virtual machines simultaneously. So in order for your computer to not die, Make sure you properly spec out your virtual machines. That way it doesn't end up using a bunch of resources 
and killing your machine. And there you have it. You created your own home lab environment that you can play in and learn a lot of things. If you're on the blue team side of things, I highly recommend you go on Kali Linux, run a couple web scanners, maybe even a couple Metasploit modules and your own malware and target the Windows 10 machine. That way your Windows 10, having Sysmon and Splunk installed, will gather a bunch of telemetry, which eventually can help you understand what suspicious or even evil looks like. And if you eventually get to the point that you want to do detection engineering, you can again see what kind of telemetry does the web scanner or malware produce and then start creating alerts based on that. That way, the next time it fires, you can actually detect it and protect it, of course. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you found it informative, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to.